Horner's syndrome is a classic neurologic syndrome with three distinct clinical signs on one side of the face. These are ptosis, which is drooping of the eyelid, meiosis, constriction of the pupil, and anhydrosis, no sweating on the affected side. Horner's syndrome is caused by a lesion anywhere along the sympathetic pathway that supplies the head, neck, and the eye. You have sympathetic nerves which supply the face, and the sympathetic nerves forms what's called the sympathetic pathway, and again, a lesion anywhere along this path can result in Horner's syndrome. Here you have the brain, contains the hypothalamus pituitary gland. The brain connects to the spinal cord via the brain stem made up of the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla, which are written here. The sympathetic pathway involved in Hornus uh, include three nerves, basically, neurons. The first neuron arises from the hypothalamus. It descends down to the cervical spinal cord section, about level C8, T1, T2. This area is also called the ciliospinal center of budge and synapses with the second uh, neuron here. The second sympathetic order neuron uh, in ocean blue here travels from the sympathetic trunk through the brachial plexus over the lung apex. It then ascends to the superior cervical ganglion located near the angle of the mandible and the roughly around the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. The bifurcation of the common carotid artery is to the external and internal carotid arteries. The second order neuron uh, synapses with the third order neuron at the superior cervical ganglion, which is again the sympathetic chain, this whole area here. The third order neuron uh, then ascends within the adventitia of the internal carotid artery. The neuron, now termed the oculosympathetic fiber, innovates a few things in the eye. Firstly, the iris dilator muscle as well as the Muller's muscle, which is a small, uh, smooth muscle in the eyelid responsible for eyelid elevation. There are fibers which branch from the superior cervical ganglion traveling along the external carotid artery, and its branches innervates the sweat glands and are responsible for facial sweating and vasodilation. Let's focus now on the third order neuron, also called the oculosympathetic uh, neuron, you can say. Remember, this neuron, it ascends along the internal carotid artery through the cavernous sinus, which is a venous plexus uh, which drains blood from the eye. The third order neuron, nerve fibers, the oculosympathetic fibers, they innervate Muller's muscle, which is a small, smooth muscle in the eyelid responsible for a minor portion of upper uh, eyelid elevation. The sympathetic nerve also innervates the iris dilator muscle which causes pupils to dilate because in a sympathetic response you are in a fight or flight response and of course uh, these fibers also supply the sweat glands because you sweat typically when you're in a fight or flight response, a sympathetic response. Horner's syndrome can result from a lesion anywhere along the three neuron sympathetic uh, pathway that originates in the hypothalamus, the first, the second, or third order neurons. This means that everything downstream would not occur. So you don't have eyelid elevation and you don't get pupil dilation. Um, because the iris dilator muscle is not innervated properly and you don't sweat. As a result, you get the clinical features of Horner syndrome, ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis. The cause or etiology of Horner syndrome in adults relates to, the to where the lesion is located. 
So 40% of cases of Horner syndrome, you don't actually know what causes it. Majority is caused by lesions in the second or third order neurons. So let's take a look at some of the causes step by step, beginning with lesions in the first order neuron. Causes of first order neuron lesion include hypothalamic strokes or tumors, brainstem strokes such as seen in Wallenberg syndrome, brainstem tumors, brainstem demyelination. Because the first order neuron travels along the cervical spinal cord, spinal cord tumors, myelitis, demyelination of the spinal cord, and syringomyelia can also cause first order neuron lesions too. Lesions to the second order neuron can be a cause of Horner syndrome too. The causes are much different and include apical lung lesions, the classic we learn at medical school, the Pankos tumor. However, subclavian artery aneurysms and any mediastinal masses can also cause compression of the second order neuron and so can cause Horner syndrome. Thyroid tumors, especially an, uh, anaplastic carcinomas, which can rapidly grow and compress the surrounding structures, including compressing the second order uh, sympathetic neuron we just learned. Lesions to the third order neuron can cause Horner syndrome, but may so with or without anhydrosis. Because remember, the nerve fibers that supply most of the sweat glands come from the superior cervical ganglion and travels along the external carotid artery. It doesn't actually go through the cavernous sinus. And so if you think about it, lesions of the third order neuron distal uh, from the internal carotid artery won't really affect sweating that much. Causes of third order neuron include the cavernous sinus issues, such as cavernous sinus tumors, thrombosis in the veins, internal carotid artery aneurysms, and pituitary tumors. The cavernous sinus is actually super important. It's a venous plexus which drains blood from the eye and surrounding structures. The cavernous sinus houses many cranial nerves number three, number four, number five, and number six. The internal carotid artery is housed with, uh, passes through the cavernous sinus as well. Now, the pituitary gland is superior and close by. Remember, the third order, order sympathetic neuron we learned about ascends along the internal carotid artery and passes through the cavernous sinus. And so, if there's a whopping pituitary tumor that can compress, injure the third order neuron, or if there's thrombosis in the cavernous sinus from infection or uh, procoagulant state that can cause edema and injury to the third order neuron, you can, you can, you know, cause Horner syndrome. Injury to the internal carotid artery, such as an internal carotid artery dissection, aneurysm, or thrombosis can also result in Horner syndrome. Finally, there's also superior cervical ganglion lesion for whatever cause can cause a, uh, you know, a lesion in third order neuron causing Horner syndrome. So those are the main causes of Horner syndrome classified into the different lesions that can occur anywhere along the sympathetic pathway. Something to remember, painful Horner syndrome you have to think about specific causes such as carotid artery dissection and cavernous sinus thrombosis. This typically occurs with a headache or neck pain in young adults. When someone presents with Horner syndrome, after taking history and performing a thorough neurological examination, because your consultant tells you to do so, uh, you need to evaluate and form a potential diagnosis. And so an investigation that can be done is something called the pharmacology test using cocaine or uh, ipraclonidine to help confirm Horner syndrome. This is where essentially you use eye drops, these, these substances, and, you, and you're giving it to the person to induce pupil dilation in both eyes. Of course, if the affected side does, doesn't dilate, then you are suspicious or confident uh, that it's Horner syndrome. 
Then you do the hydroxyamphetamine eye drop test, which helps identify localization of the lesion. It actually helps distinguish third order neuron from first or second order neuron lesions only. Finally, you need to do some imaging. So MRI brain, neck, or CT angiogram can be used to identify any tumors, any carotid artery dissections, or anything else that could be causing um, this manifestation or lesions along the sympathetic pathway. Treatment of Horner's uh, will obviously depend on the cause.